This video is for everyone who's ever asked me, how many fingers am I holding up? How can you see me if you can't see? Can you see me here? Can you see me here? Can you see me here? Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. As you can tell from the title, today we're talking about what I can see. I did a see what I see video a couple years back. I think two years ago, but seeing as my vision got worse in the last six months, it's time to let you know what I see. And I think this is a really good jump board for any of you who are new to my channel. Maybe you found me from the Atlanta series reviews, or you stumbled on this video randomly and just want to know what it's like to live life legally blind. So thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe and let's get into it. Oh, before we go, what I do want to say though, is I dedicate this video to anyone who's ever asked me, how many fingers am I holding up? Can you see me here? Can you see me here? Can you see me here? Wait, how can you see if you can't see? How did you get here? Why don't you have a dog or cane? Wear your blind glasses. Oh, you're not really blind. The easiest way for me to describe what I see is to give you the same example I gave you at the end of the video I did, what, two years ago? A little refresher, of course, for those of you who've seen that one and for those of you who haven't, put your fingers to the side of your face. Or anything actually you could put a glass or something to the side of your face whatever you put to the side of your face you can see because you're using your peripheral vision you can tell that your fingers are your fingers you can see them bend you might even be able to see the line where the bends happen you can tell what color it is if you have nail polish you could probably see that too but you can't see clearly as if you were looking directly at your hands that's what it's like for me even when i'm looking directly at something which to be honest i don't really do look directly at anything these days a lot of times when i meet someone for the first time they'll i don't think alicia likes me or i think alicia has social anxiety nah it's just that i can't see you so i'm using the other part of my eye which might look like i'm looking above and past you or to the side or away from you but i'm trying to maintain eye contact i hate that because one thing i prided myself in before i lost vision was keeping eye contact and being able to give that person my attention it's a sign of honesty it's a sign of just paying attention to someone and i can't really do it anymore so it sucks but whatever we're gonna get into that a little bit more because there's a science behind that. But just to start, the way I see, the way you would see something peripherally if you have 20/20 vision is how I see everything, whether it's in front of my eyes or the side of my eyes. Which leads to the next question everyone always asks me: How did you get here? If I go to a networking event, wait, how did you get here? How do you walk around so confidently? Well, for one. <laughs> I use my peripherals. As I mentioned, if you're looking at something from the corner of your eye, maybe you're having a discussion with someone, but you can see someone approaching you. Or if you're texting, you can see cars coming up. That's the same thing I'm doing every day, everywhere I go. I'm able to spatially see where I'm at using my peripheral. Luckily, thank God, Stargardt's disease only affects the center vision, your retina. And in fact, the very small part of your retina called the macular, which is why this disease is called macular degeneration. It's the deterioration of that very small part of your eye that's responsible for seeing detail, depth perception, color distinction, all these things vary for each person. For me, I've got good color perception, depth perception is kind of waning, and detail pff, out the window. So it really depends on the stage of star guards you're at and how this disease is expressed in your eyes. For me, navigation is no problem. Actually, I lied. The only thing I struggle with as of late is dimly lit stairs. I went to an event a couple weeks ago with a friend and she just zoomed down the stairs and I was in fear of down the stairs. So I took my time. Every time the stairs plateaued, I just hesitated a little bit. Once I have that first step, it's like a kid learning to walk. I kind of, and I'm okay, but it's that first step in a dimly lit space that gets me every time. And I'm not trying to this ain't no ski alps. I'm not trying to go down the stairs like that. So I'd rather take my time. I'm convinced people don't realize how visually impaired I am because I don't have glasses, a dog or a cane. Whether it's the dark Ray Charles glasses or some kind of corrective lenses, I don't need those things. I'll wear sunglasses on a sunny day or even an overcast day if the sun's peeking through because it stings my eyes. If you have star guards, let me know down below if that happens to you. Glasses don't work. What glasses do is they magnify the image and make it appear closer or further from your cornea or retina so that your brain can decipher what it is. But those cells have died, so my eye can't do that. A lot of times people are like, oh, you should just wear glasses. Why don't you wear your glasses? You're just stubborn and should wear glasses. 
do you think I would struggle as much as I have for the last 10 years if I could just wear glasses? The reason why I don't have those types of things is because they don't work for the way my vision's deteriorated. Now, if I had RP, which is like the fraternal sister of this disease, I would because my peripheral would be deteriorating, I'd have tunnel vision and I wouldn't be able to get around and navigate easily. With that said, I still struggle, can't see signs, so I go down the wrong street all the time. I press the wrong elevator buttons, even in my own building, I go up to the wrong doors. <laughs> I even go up to the wrong people. Okay, that reminds me another really good way of illustrating what I see is think about it. When you go to the department store, do those even exist? I don't know, I'm an online shopping girl. But when you go to a store, there's mannequins, right? And you can see what the mannequin is wearing. You may even be able to see the detail of the shirt or if they're wearing pants or whatever color it is. You can tell, right? But the mannequin itself, unless it's one of those creepy ones that actually has like the eyelashes and colored eyes and a lip, I don't know why they do that because that's not a look. But the ones that are the classic ones that just are the same color and have just the silhouette of a face, that's how I see everybody, unless you're in my personal space. If you're like all the way up, I could see you clearly because people are like, can you see me from here? Can you see me from here? No, not unless you're in my business can I see you. You have to be really close for me to be able to see your stubble, your wrinkles, your acne, your blemishes. Otherwise, face tune. Everyone looks so good to me. That's why a lot of times I go on Instagram, someone I've known for years, and I'm like, dang. Yeah, age is catching up to you. But when I look at someone, they look as good as my vlog camera makes me look. Which, by the way, I got a new vlog camera this week. And I finally understand why the vlog girls look so good. I thought they all just happened to have clean skin. And I'm like, I need to know their regimen. Nah, there's a beautify effect on those things. But I digress. <laughs> Back to the story. So everything is smooth to me, but not blurry. I want to make that dissertion because a lot of times people will take off their glasses and be like, I can't live without these. And maybe you can. Maybe your vision is so blurred that it's hard for you to see and do. For me, it's not blurry as much as smooth. There's a difference. Blurry for me would be I can't tell those are blinds in front of me or that's a plan or this is a microphone and I might knock into these things. But smooth means there's no detail. So when I look at my microphone, I don't wanna pick it up because it's gonna affect the sound, but my microphone has words on it that tell you what each function is. I can't see it, it has buttons. I can barely see that. You know that meme? Barely. <laughs> Same with my camera, I've memorized it, which on that note, let me know which video you wanna see next. Do you want a video of how I film? how I do everything from planning to posting for YouTube and all my social media content, or tips, tricks, and tactics, what I do day to day to make my life easier. Let me know down below and I'll post that one next. Everything is smooth, not blurred. With that said, just because you give me a form or a document, no matter how close it is to my face, I can't see it with or without glasses. I have to zoom in either taking a photograph or using a magnification app. And that's why a lot of times people don't really comprehend what it means to be legally blind with Stargardt's disease versus another disease versus what blind is sold as in pop culture and TV. Yeah, it's complicated and it's annoying. I hope I'm explaining it well thus far. To take it a step further, when it comes to navigation or everyday things, the dial on the fridge or the stove or the buttons in the elevator, I can't see. Everything is memory and sometimes I press the wrong elevator button and get off at the wrong floor in my own apartment. It happens, I zoom in or I laugh or ask the person who's in the elevator with me to press it so I don't have to go through that. There's so many ways to get around or get over the obstacles of vision loss. Some things there's no getting over, it just is what it is. I have to use a magnification mirror in order to do my makeup and sometimes I still have mascara smudged under my eye, not until in post pro. No one could tell me all day, girl, you got mascara under your eye. Even up to yesterday, I went out to lunch. My friend's like, I could tell your vision got worse since I last saw you. But he couldn't have pointed out that there was mascara smudged under my eye. Hmm. To put it plainly and simply, from the time you open your eyes to the time your head hits your pillow, you use your central vision. So just imagine how annoying it is for me, especially since most of my life I could see perfectly. I have to adjust. And some days I go to bed and I wake up and it's worse and I'm like, I just got used to it. There's no, oh, my vision got better today. It just gets worse. It just depends on how rapidly it gets worse. So I think that's the worst part of losing vision. That and losing a sense of yourself and what you thought life could be. Because there's some things you simply can't do anymore and you have to grapple with that. 
I respect and even admire all the other people that have lost vision, whether they're legally blind, partially slighted, or completely blind, that are like, I wouldn't have it any other way. I love it. I'm not part of that camp. If I could snap my fingers and get a cure, I would. I lived too many years of my life being able to do and be independent. I just, I'm just grateful that I'm resilient enough and resourceful enough to find ways around things, but there's just some things that I just can't do and it annoys me because I can't do it anymore. And I just wanna relay that frustration to you. I don't think I share that enough on my channel. And furthermore, when I'm talking to friends or family, I don't know if it's an insecurity to be that vulnerable with them or what, but I never really get to the grittiness of it, how much it affects every minute of every day. <laughs> think about it, you go to take a shower, you go to pick up something to read it. You go to grab something. Something as simple as filling a glass cup with a clear liquid called water is effing difficult, okay? And I don't share that enough. And I think if you are sharing what you see with someone that cares about you, not just everybody, you're not gonna tell the person you're ordering at the cafe from all your woes, but if someone's taking the time to get to know you, I think you should be transparent and share that with them so they can better understand. I'm saying this to wrap up this video because I've been through many experiences where friends and family don't know how intense it is. I don't wanna say bad because I think it's, whether you're day one diagnosed with Sargas disease or living with it for a long time, it's bad. It'd be better if you didn't have the disease. But when you're grappling with the struggle of Stargardt's, losing vision or if it's plateaued for a minute, whatever it is, you do a disservice for yourself not being open and honest with those that are around you that can enable you and help you. My only example that I'll give in this video because I've done story times before is I had a manager once who told me that I was being lazy and not trying at my job because I was making mistakes with decimal points, which I didn't do too often actually. And they referenced my YouTube channel, which is why I don't like mixing life with life legally blind on here pretty much they came to the conclusion if i can do all this i should be able to do something that i learned two weeks ago which is not realistic because i've been doing this for over a decade and like i said it's memory work maybe youtube is that hard but since i learned it before my vision got this bad it doesn't seem that hard but then again like i said i got a new vlog camera this week and oh my gosh i want to throw the camera out the window because memorizing all these functions i want to pull out my hair I've noticed in my circle that a lot of people don't actually understand how bad it is because I make it look easy, which isn't a bad thing. I don't want to be a burden to anyone, and I've mentioned that before in past videos. But I also don't want to do a disservice to myself being the strong woman who is able to conquer it and not be clear about what I need in order to thrive and sometimes even just survive. A lot of times people will still do things Oh, I forgot you're blind. And that's fine. That I don't take it personally, but it's the comments of, well, you're able to do this. It's just that you don't want to do that. And it's like, no, it's, it's not that simple. An example I can give you is I was once working somewhere and that person who was also my friend pointed out, oh, you just don't want to pay attention. That's why you keep making mistakes here. And it's like, no, it's because the software is old and it doesn't zoom in properly. And no matter how much time I take, there's certain things I just can't see. I can do the best I can do. I think what that illustrates is that there's going to be people that cannot comprehend for whatever reason and people who do not want to comprehend. And the latter don't want to comprehend because for them, they'd have to grapple with the seriousness of the situation. It's easier to say so-and-so is lazy or so-and-so is incompetent or so-and-so is stupid rather than I now need to do something to enable this person at work or in our friendship or in our family ties to be their best sense of themselves. I now have to take action. A lot of people in the world, call a spade a spade, don't want to take action. It's easier to have that, oh, I feel sorry for you moment or you empowered me moment rather than I need to step up to the plate because this is what's required of me out of this relationship or friendship or whatever it is. But I've talked about this in detail in my sight loss series. I have two different versions if you wanna check out on 
YouTube membership or if you just want to pay the dollar a month to support the channel as is, I'd be grateful for it. If you want more content, your girl's got a Patreon pod that you can check out. That's where I'm going to end this video. I feel like I have so much more to say, but I've already said a lot. And I hope you guys kind of got the gist of what I see and what stage I'm at. If you haven't already, subscribe for more. Comment down below if you have Stark disease, RP, any eye disease, have someone in your family with it, never known someone with it, found me from the Atlanta series or another video and we're just intrigued on what I see nowadays. I'd love to know. Just gives me an idea of the community we're building here. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.